Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this episode, I'll demonstrate how you can start your script or your binary file as a service. So essentially what happens is that when you start as a service, when you reboot your Linux box, it will start as well. I'll be uh, running a few commands on my Ubuntu. Uh, all these commands will be available on the description or on my blog. Please check out the description below. So let's get started. So I'm going to SSH into my Linux box. Right click on your desktop, Windows desktop and terminal. And then in here, you gonna zoom in a bit so that you can see a bit clearly. Okay, in here, you're going to type SSH uh, username at IP address. Okay, once you do that, they'll prompt you for a password. Enter your password and then you are entered into the Linux box here. So I'm just going to go in as a super user here so that uh, uh, everything will be allowed. Okay, so uh, I'm running uh, Ubuntu 20.04. Let me show you. A. Okay, uh, I'm running on a Raspberry Pi here today. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to show you a script that I have already written. It could be anything. It could be binary file. Just for the demonstration, I'll be using this script here. It is in a sector directory and it's called rubytest.sh. If you look at it here, and it's simply an infinite loop printing, keep running, taking two arguments here, right? And then, uh, and that's it. So let me show you what it looks like. Control X to exit. I'm using a nano text editor, as you can see. So in order to run this, just run this guy here. And then you can see it's an infinite loop. There was no argument. That's why they didn't put the argument here. To stop your script from running is Control Z to stop. So I'm not gonna put a uh, argument here. Say, uh, dot, uh, let's say, Ruby, uh, a, B, C, D, E, F, or something like that. And you can see the two arguments get truncated, uh, what do you call it? Yeah, concatenated together with the output. Control Z to stop again. Okay, so I've got a script, and uh, this script takes argument. So the first thing I normally do is that uh, I uh, make that uh, particular script uh, change mod, so like that. So essentially what this does is that uh, it, uh, let me show you, uh, minus A, L etc slash if we look at this guy here it allows execution in every level okay so once that's done uh, next thing you're gonna have to do is to create the, a file in your ini t direct dot d directory there so uh, to do that i'm gonna clear this screen here zoom in a bit more it's a nano which is a text editor and that file has to reside in this directory right so if you hit enter in here, you have to enter your uh, start script, stop script, and uh, restart script. So uh, again, this will be made available on the description below. I'm gonna paste it, and this is what it looks like. So if I were to navigate all the way up here, it's comments here. So the first one is just a path. You have to define that. Next one is your script name. They call it daemon. And daemon ops opts is your argument this is dollar one this is dollar two it could be a file too if you like if your binary or your shell script file is able to process a file it could be a file uh, hashtag hash means a uh, comment and you just give it a name a description and i've also created a pid file so what this does is that when you launch your script and you do uh, ps minus aux which i'll show you later on uh, it will be assigned a PID, right? A process ID number, and it's easy to locate. And that number will be saved in this file. But I'll show you the content of it as soon as that's running. Okay, the first section here is is start. When you issue a start command, this is what you what it does. It starts quiet and background. Sorry, quiet here, and background, and takes the PID and writes PID number, and then writes the PID number to that PID file here, right? And gives it a name, which is actually from here and then minus m minus c i'm not sure what this does if you know please leave a comment here run as a user as a roots execute the daemon which is my shell script this guy here and daemon opts it goes here you can't really see it 
but the uh, demon let me try going that way is actually the last one is uh, dash dash demon opts right right here which is your argument and this one echoes a name which is this guy here to show you that uh, is starting and stopping again is this so it's the same set of argument I guess uh, this a uh, variable here and this variable here but it stops and anything else if you enter like a not start not stop anything else they'll give you some sort of a help or a usage of how to use it okay so uh, generally this uh, this script works in most of the application unless otherwise there's something um, complicated that you want to do uh, you might need to add it but it works a good 99% of the application that I've worked so far so once this is done press Control X here to save and exit X they say do you want to save it yes and enter and just to check it out uh, I normally type uh, cat etc D and just to see if uh, if it really uh, entered all the details there you can see the content of it is it's all good so it's, it's uh, working so now you're gonna have to uh, launch this uh, on your or as a service the command would be to um, do this let me clear my screen here so you can see it clearly okay the first command is to actually reload your daemon once you reload it uh, you're gonna change the mode from 755 so that it runs so essentially doing the same thing like if you do ls minus al nit dot t if you look at it it's the permission that we're talking about here so basically this is seven this is five and this is five it's actually binary two to the power of uh, two to the power of four here and one here next thing you're gonna do you're gonna have to start I'm gonna clear here. you're gonna start that uh, ruby test and after that you're gonna have to enable it so you'll see something like that come up and this is all right all right so if you do ps minus a u x you can see it is already started that's what it does so just as a test I'm gonna reboot this uh, Raspberry Pi so I'm gonna go sudo reboot and then I'm gonna give it a few moment for it to come back again and we'll see if the this particular service is still running of course the PID this is your PID number this number is going to be way up higher because it's starting as a service so let's uh, let's try this again here okay enter your password I'm gonna go in as a super user anyways okay now if you type PS minus a u x you can see uh, let's look for your process that started like I said it's gonna be way up there right here see how it started even after you reboot your Raspberry Pi um, another one uh, thing that I wanted to show was uh, this guy here we talk about the uh, uh, let me show you what I mean by sectra minus D we talked about the PID uh, uh, where you can actually find it so we talked about this one here it creates a file called rubytest.pid and if you look at the content of this file I'm gonna control X and exit I copied this in my clipboard so what we're expecting to see is the PID number for this which is 128 right if you, this is the number that we will see here so if we do cat here is this is mostly for debugging I guess you can see that it's running if this process is not running this file will either be not be there or will be empty okay, so that's basically how you start your script or your binary file as a service in the next uh, episode of this video I'll show you how you can actually stop this process uh, which is essential to know because uh, you don't want some of the process to be running right but you have to be careful when you remove those process uh, for now I guess uh, if you like this tutorial please like and subscribe for more other than that you have a good day bye now